Plan friends, I literally wake up to this magical wind chime that you're listening to every morning. This beautiful melody wafts into my bedroom through the window, and it is the most amazingly relaxing way to wake up. I can't even. I don't mean to be dramatic, plant friends, but the addition of the two Wind River chimes that I've added to my home has surprisingly been like the best thing I've done for my mental health this year. Every time I hear a chime, because I have them on both sides of my house, I am reminded to drop out of my busy mind and into my body for a moment. I am reminded to get outside and visit my garden. I am reminded to take a deep breath and drop into gratitude. This kind of mesmerizing experience that I've gone through, something that was a bit unexpected, has left me rather curious, as most things that make me happy do, wondering why do these chimes sound so good? How do they get made? Why do they have this mindful, relaxing experience that they do? So today, we actually dive into a plant-adjacent episode about the joyful addition to anyone's garden of a magical wind chime to bring more harmony into your life. Welcome to the Growing Joy podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives. I'm Maria, author of Growing Joy, the Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, an epic plant killer turned happy plant lady. On Growing Joy, you'll find conversations about plant care, plant community, and wellness through the lens of plants. Hello, plant friends. I hope you've had beautifully planty weeks. I'm actually recording the intro for this episode on my porch right under my Wind River wind chime. And like I said earlier, you've probably heard them on my social media or on the podcast, but you've also probably heard the ads because the chimes underscore the Wind River ads. They've been a beloved partner of the show this year. But, you know, the partnership has gone way beyond just a traditional sponsorship. As I've gotten to know the people at Wind River, I have been so impressed by the company they've built. I've gotten curious about how the chimes are made and why they're so amazing, but also the company that they've built that is so rooted in philanthropy. And as we've been kind of exploring some planty entrepreneurs and the history of things this year on the podcast, I thought it would be fun to do an episode on an exploration of how wind chimes get made, but also how the people at Wind River built this beautiful company. I know that members of our community are curious and inspired by chimes as well, because whenever I post these chimes on my social media, I hear the most tear-jerking, awe-inspiring stories from all of you about the emotional experiences that you have with your chimes in your gardens and the meanings that they represent for you. I know I'm not alone in my adoration of chimes. And when I know I'm not alone, I've got to bring a conversation to the larger community about what's bringing me joy lately. It's an exploration of something that many of us have as a joyful addition to our gardens that surprises and delights us. So today we're joined by Jamie, Patty, and Luke to dive deeper. Get ready for a shockingly moving episode on the power of chimes in our lives and in our gardens. Welcome to Growing Joy, Jamie, Patty, and Luke, my newest friends, makers of the most joyful thing in my garden that I didn't know I needed until this year, (laughs) the Wind River Chimes. Before we dive in, since we have a little bit of a panel today, I would love for each of you to introduce yourself and what you do for Wind River. So Patty, do you want to start? Sure. I am Patty Baisden. I am vice president of Wind River Chimes, and I assist Jamie with leading the company. Great. What about you, Jamie? My name is Jamie Baisden. So one thing Patty didn't mention is we're co-owners of the business. So we have multiple levels of roles and then we have the ownership role that we play. And then I am president and CEO. So operationally, I'm involved in overseeing and working with our wonderful leadership team. And speaking of leadership and the team, Luke? Hi, I'm Luke Kraushorn. I am the vice president of sales and I joined Wind River in 2007 and I oversee our sales and our customer service and our fulfillment operations. Something that surprised me is every time I share my chimes on my Instagram stories or on my Instagram, people write me the most emotional stories. I think something when I started working with you guys, what I didn't realize was the emotional connection to wind chimes that people have. I thought, 
oh, of course, wind chimes, they sound beautiful. We're outdoors in our garden. Why would you not want a beautiful melodic melody wafting in the wind? But what I've grown to realize just from feedback from the community is is how emotional this engraving can be, whether it's a wedding date. I remember when my grandma passed away, someone gifted my mom a, a wind chime with her name engraved in it. And, you know, we say that she sings to my dad out of his office window. And that's been a very surprising and very heartwarming thing that I have I've grown to really appreciate. So Jamie and Patty, do you have a favorite wind chime or a favorite story like that? Well, my favorite wind chime is the Corinthian 736 size because I like the scale that it is. It's a, a G7. And so it's very happy to me. I like that just the way those tones go together. That's my favorite. And that's the one that in 2004, again, before we bought the company, when I was working, that's the one that I purchased and we still have hanging in the tree in the front yard. I love that. What about you, Jamie? So interesting that Patty mentioned a specific size. For me, it's the actual chime that Patty just mentioned because Patty started working for the business about nine months before I did. And that was the first wind chime that came to our house. And the really cool thing about it for me is it's a powder coating that was quite difficult to get perfect all the time. And eventually we stopped using that powder coating. So it's a one of a kind or out of production. It was the wind chime that I experienced from this business before I worked for the business. So for me, that particular chime is something that I hold dear for, for a number of ways and that it, it's one of the things that actually it was easy to enter into discussions on buying a business when you loved the product personally. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a parallel here because a lot of people say with gardening and with houseplants, you don't understand the joy that you get from gardening or the joy that you get from caring for a beautiful houseplant collection until you're like actually having the experience. And it's kind of the same with wind chimes. From the outside and some of my friends look at me about my gardening and my plant obsession, they're like, oh my gosh, Maria is a crazy plant lady, blah, blah, blah. But they don't get it because the minute they get a plant and they start developing their relationship with nature, they become that crazy plant lady as well. And it's the same with chimes. It's like you don't understand until you're in the presence of one. And then you're like, I can't not have this sound every day waking me up in the morning. It's so fascinating. Now you mentioned that you guys bought the company. So can you give us a brief history of Wind River and the evolution of the chimes that you have now? I will work on being brief. So in 1986, there's a young man, he had a van and he sold chimes on the flea market circle in Florida. Well, he sold lots of products, but he bought wind chimes from someone local sold them at flea markets and so forth. They turned out to be one of his best-selling items. His supplier stopped making them. They were one of his best sellers. He started making them. Well, you know, he had a background that was, physics was one of his things. So he started to become really obsessed with making them better. Then he decided that he could make more of them than he could sell through the flea market. And so that led to marketing to stores throughout the country and so forth. And, and he grew the business, but it started as a young man who was figuring out a way to make a living and doing what he wanted to do. And you never know what's going to happen or who you're going to meet or what little turn you're going to make. And it turned into a nationwide business based on that. So had his suppliers not stopped making wind chimes, we'll never know if, if the company would have existed. And how did you get involved? So we got to know the former owner at church. And he and Jamie would have business luncheons and discuss just business because all business is a resource and people and providing that resource for people at a very basic level, any, any business, whether it's a nonprofit or a for-profit, private, you know, whatever. So Jamie and the former owner would have lunch together. And he mentioned that he needed an HR director because his HR director was leaving. And so Jamie volunteered me because I had been home with our kids and my background is child development. And while I'd never done HR, HR and child development are kind of hand in glove. And so that was September of 2004. Then spring of 2005, he approached Jamie with his laptop open and said, here's my proposal. You're my exit plan. 
And he trusted us. He, you know, he knew Jamie from talking about business. He knew me from what, how I had worked the last eight months in the business. And he was ready to get out and let us take the reins. So he asked that we not offshore the business because he wanted to keep it in the United States. That was very important to him. And it's very important to us too. We work really, really hard to keep all our suppliers within the United States as much as we possibly, possibly can. He wanted us to treat the employees well, and he wanted us to use the business as a resource for beyond ourselves, for the local and global community. So those were things we all would have done anyway. So we signed up. Jamie told me he felt like he was at the top of a roller coaster and had all this potential energy and, you know, going forward was going to be this grand roller coaster ride of an adventure. But I hate roller coasters. <laughs> So. <laughs> it was the wrong sales approach. Wow. And how has the company evolved since you've taken the reins? We have an excellent leadership team. That, I guess, for me is the foremost thing in that, you know, when you start a business from scratch, you don't have any resources. We purchased a business, but we didn't have 20 years of experience in the industry the way he did. And we were learning by drinking through a fire hose. And I learned very quickly that it was imperative to find the right people to work with us and help us. We do have a, a very, very good leadership team who can help not just manage the business, lead the business and look at where the future is. A really good story. Maybe two years after we purchased the business, Aurelian Akatrini, who's our, our vice president of operations, and he's a mechanical engineer, he and I were discussing different ways to improve our processes. And we analyzed the one process that everything touched, everything has a pipe. And when we process and, and make our, our chimes, we start with 12 foot or 11 foot pieces of tubing and turn them into the tuned notes for the scale. And we developed a piece of equipment that would make that process much better. The finished product would be better. It would be faster, much safer. And you know, the first time that the former owner came in and looked at it, he thought it was great. Well, I had to lean on people to help me where he was the one who started it and worked his way up and knew all the processes and how everything worked. But what that taught me was I needed to have the right team to help us make this business what it is today. And I think that's our, our biggest, from my standpoint, that's what Patty and I have, have that's different than before. And, you know, we're really blessed. We have people who've worked on the production floor for 23 or 24 years. This is a business where the way we approach our employees and the way we think of this as a family business, not just Patty and Jamie and our family, but the Wind River family, that is what's really special to me. So the leadership team and everyone else who come to work every day, and, and this is a special place to work, and they've been coming back for 25 years, that lets me know that, that we're doing something right. One of the best piece of entrepreneurial advice I've ever gotten is hire people that are smarter than you and don't micromanage them. Let them add their expertise to elevate your business. I want to dive into the, the chimes themselves. So a story that I'd love to share, every time I have someone come to my house, I have two of your chimes on both sides of my house. So wherever you're at, you're listening to a chime. We had a party this weekend. Everybody was outside. And I had a girl look at me and say, is that sound wind chimes? And I was like, yeah, the wind chime, it's right there. It's on our porch. She said, I hate wind chimes. I do not understand why I like the sound of this wind chime so much. Like your house sounds like a spa. I've never heard a wind chime sound like that before. My mom had the same experience. She came over for a week to help me heal through a surgery. And every time she was in the kitchen, she just couldn't believe the quality of the wind chimes. So Luke, can I ask you, how are you making these things? Like they really do... How do you make a wind chime? How do you get there? How do you make the final product? There's a lot of steps that go into assembling the parts, but at its core, you've got a pipe and, and when you hit it, it's going to vibrate and make a tone. And what helps make the tones that are in our wind chimes is that we've paid attention to that pipe. So it is an alloy that we've selected because it gives a mellow, soothing tone, not a harsh one. And the pipes that we use are thick walled pipes. So if you have a really thin wall pipe, think of a, a soda can. It's really thin, you get that crackly sound. Our chimes are using 
a thicker piece of metal. And so that gives you a richer, fuller sound when that pipe rings. And then we tune it. And so what happens when we design a new chime is we get a pipe profile in a certain diameter, a certain thickness, and we we cut all the notes that are in the range that we're looking for. And then we find the ones that resonate best within that pipe. And we build a scale around the notes that sound the best. So, you know, in any any geometry, you'll have you'll have resonance and you'll have interference in terms of sound. And so the notes that we choose are the ones that are in the pipe, uh, so to speak. And so we built the chime around those. Have you heard of cover crops, plant friends? They're actually one of the easiest and most economical ways to improve your soil. You plant cover crops and they enrich the soil for a better yield next year. So cover crops are a sow and let grow crop that provide multiple benefits to the soil, ecosystem, and future plantings. Depending on the variety of cover crops you try, they can fix nitrogen, mine essential nutrients from deep underground, loosen packed clay, suppress weed growth, discourage erosion, support beneficial insect populations, add organic matter to the soil, and more. If you watch any documentary about soil amendment and like the future of a more robust soil, they talk about cover crops. Territorial Seed Company is your go-to resource for all sorts of cover crops, and now is the time to clean out your summer crops and get your cover crop seeds started. Take advantage of these hardworking, easy care plants and see the difference it can make in your garden next year. But you got to plant them now. And Territorial Seed Company has so many cover crop options from single seeds to mixes. Visit TerritorialSeed.com slash Growing Joy to shop an amazing cover crop selection and you get a 10% discount. For 10% off anything at Territorial Seed Company, you can go to TerritorialSeed.com slash Growing Joy. Friends, I just returned from the most amazing vacation in Italy, and particularly what made it so amazing is the work that I did before I left to refresh my Italian with Rosetta Stone. I've been prepping for this trip to Italy for the last several months with daily doses of Rosetta Stone on their easy-to-use platform and app. It makes learning a language or refreshing a language so easy, and I had so much fun while doing it. It was a great way to wake my brain up in the morning. If you have international travel coming up, I gotta tell you, knowing the basics of the local language helps so much. When we were in Italy, we were able to avoid the tourist traps and we were able to really plug into the culture, right? That's why you travel internationally. If you've had learning a language on your bucket list, Rosetta Stone has been the expert in language learning for 30 years. They've helped millions of people build the fluency and confidence to speak new languages through immersion. It even has this cool speech recognition feature, which actually tracks how you're pronouncing the language and gives you feedback on how to pronounce it with a more authentic accent. Whether you want to refresh a language skill you learned a while ago, like I did. Maybe you want to learn a new language to get the most out of your travel. Rosetta Stone can help get you there. They have 25 languages to choose from and a lifetime membership. So I learned Italian this year, but because I have the lifetime membership, I can learn Spanish or Chinese next year or in 10 years. And they're giving you an insane discount. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a limited time, Growing Joy listeners get 50% off Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Plan friend, it's a (laughs) no-brainer. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash today. That's rosetta, R-O-S-E-T-T-A, stone.com slash today. So it's not like you're choosing a melody, because that was my other question, because there's so many different melodies that you can choose. There's so many different sounds you can choose from your website. So is it that you're constructing a melody and then you're picking the chimes that match that melody? Or is it that you're starting with one sound and then you're building off of that? Like, how does the construction of the tones work in one chime? So in most of our chimes, we're building a pentatonic scale with an octave on top. So six notes. And that's very similar to a chord that you would play on a piano or a guitar. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's built into our our musical history. And so the melodies that you get from the chords in terms of a a specific chord, a lot of times will be familiar because it's how we structure chords in our society. And so 
we tune our chimes to different scales, and some of those would be higher or lower than other chimes based on the size of the pipe and the length of the pipe. But they're all a chord that means the notes in the chime are relating to each other in the same way in that pentatonic chord. Yeah, because I feel like most chimes, when you think about it, for example, my sister got my mom a chime not from your company a while back, and it's so high pitched. It's so brittle. I wouldn't say it's very enjoyable. It feels kind of like fairy, like very high pitched, like little kind of almost grating. And I have the same one that you have, the Corinthian 50. And it's so deep and rich. And they sound almost like Tibetan bowls more than they sound like chimes. Like it's such a deeper, richer tone when we sleep with our door open in the summer and it's windy in the morning, sometimes I'll wake up to the chimes and I'm like, I think I live in a real life spa. This is wild. It is nice to have that every day, all day long. And spas do use our wind chimes in them or some spas actually retail them, but it is not an uncommon thing to find chimes in spas. So actually, I'd like to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Sure. So what is the feeling that you get if you could describe what the feeling you get when you hear our wind chimes, how does it make you feel? Oh, it's so relaxed. I meditate with them. I go outside and I sit under your wind chimes when the weather's nice. I Actually, I've done it in the snow before, but I will sit under the wind chime and that the sound, it's the most relaxing, like peaceful sound. But yeah, I feel like, especially it, In a society where we're so used to like very grating white noise, I'm coming from New York City where I used to listen to sirens and, you know, people screaming on the street. There's something beautiful about listening to the chime and bird song instead. But even if I was still in the city, to have the chime kind of drown out that white noise in the city would have been very nice as well. So I ask you that question because frequently I'll I'll be asked, what do you do, right? Or what do you make or what does your business do? And it's fascinating because we have, we go through design, supply chain, manufacturing, packaging, sales, everything you need to do to run a business and to provide the product. But what we actually sell is the experience you just described. That's why our chimes are are so special. So we go through everything that Luke mentioned to be able to get the chime to your house and have it hung up. But the experience you get from it, that feeling of peace, harmony, relaxation, and a few seconds of rest is really what we provide to our customers. And I think that that's what makes it so special. Music moves us. Mm -hmm. There's a a primal connection to music and sound. I mean, for thousands of years, right? Communal dancing, communal music has been part of the human experience. But because we've designed it in that scale and each note is in the scale and they create the chords that Luke mentioned, the feeling you get when you hear them is what we're providing. We're playing music outside your house or in your garden. And, you know, for you to hear that music, all you need is a little breeze and it's just happening automatically. Yeah. Even just feeling reconnected to the wind when I talk until I'm blue in the face about connecting to nature. You know, we are nature. And so the more we can spend time with nature, the more we can spend time with ourselves. And you can't see the wind. You can feel the wind sometimes, but you can't see it. So the fact that you can hear the wind in this new way is very interesting. It's a very interesting perspective to approach chimes with. I know that you guys talk about the science of sound a lot and how nerdy you are about it and, you know, how you approach it. Can you speak to that science of sound? Sure. So Luke mentioned that we use a specific alloy. We've gone through and tested many different types of of alloys of aluminum. And we've stuck with one that's a non-standard alloy. It's alloyed for us. And we do that because it creates the best tones and resonances. We control as many of the processes as we can. So the material we get meets our exacting standards. And then we actually test it three times during the process to make sure that we're going to get the notes and the tones and resonances that we need for each one of the scales that we're creating. The base requirement is that the experience our customer gets moves them and affects them in a positive way. We also have worked really hard to the piece that actually strikes the tubes when the sound is created 
we've worked really hard. If you strike a tube with, uh, you know, if you'd go up with a stick and hit it, yeah, it would make sound, but you're going to hear more of the stick than you are of the resonance in the tube. So where the striker hits and the material that the striker is created from is also very important because it, again, this is the nerdy geeky word, but the elastic collision when the striker hits the tubes puts all the energy into the tube. So it makes the sound, it makes the tube really resonate where instead of the striker itself absorbing back into that, that collision. And so that's a piece that we've kept consistent because it is so critical to getting the energy into the tube so the tube can resonate. Oh yes, this is something we can we can go down. The string we use is very specific in that it needs to be UV treated so it doesn't fall apart, but it needs to be pliable enough and supple enough to allow the tubes to resonate correctly, to allow the striker and the wind sail to move correctly. The square area of the wind sail and how long the string is, and the pendulum effect that that creates in an average wind to move the mass of the striker for that particular chime so it has the correct impact with the tubes instead of it being overdone or no impact with the tubes. So the diameter of the domes on top. It's physics. And how those tubes are spaced apart and how far apart they are. So every part of what we do is absolutely designed to create the tones and resonances that we need to provide the experience for our customer. Yeah, it's interesting. It really is physics. You think because it's this chime that's so ethereal and, you know, artsy and musical that it's like, oh yeah, I string some chimes together. But it sounds like you have a head mechanical engineer, you have engineers in your company. It's actually a very scientific approach. Like I said earlier, Something that really surprised me was this emotional connection with chimes. Do you have any favorite stories of clients, people who have purchased the chimes for those emotional moments that you can share? I think my favorite is, we call them love letters. So we get love letters. Now we may get love emails just as often as we get love letters. Years ago, we got a letter from a lady and I I may, may end up actually crying here. So I'm paraphrasing her letter, but her husband had passed away. And someone gave her a wind chime as a bereavement gift. And when her grandson, who was very little, heard the wind chimes, he would tell grandma that grandpa was talking to him and singing to him. And so the emotional connection, you know, we talked about music and how it connects us. So at that moment in that child's life and that grandma's life, the music that our chime played, made a connection that they'll have forever. Every time he hears it, the grandson thinks of the grandfather. So if I could write a story of what I hoped our product provided to people, I couldn't write a better story. Yeah, that's incredible. What about you, Patty? Do you have a favorite story? One of my favorite stories, I have to pick between two. One, it was given as a gift after they lost their family dog. And they said it was the dog howling at night. And, and but this was a good thing. <laughs> so I love that. It made me smile because it's bringing back this wonderful memory of their beloved family member that happened to have four legs. But it was the dog howling. And I'm thinking, well, I'm glad that that's a happy memory <laughs> instead of how obnoxious your dog was howling. When he, when he was alive, it might have been not so happy. But they thought that that was the dog being there with them. My other favorite letters that I got, it was actually a repair that came in from a lady in Licking, Missouri. And it's very close to where my grandmother grew up and a natural disaster had gone through. And she sent back the parts of her wind chime that she could find and she wanted it repaired. And my first inclination was, well, I've got to just send this lady a new chime. I mean, we don't even have all the parts and pieces here. And then I thought, no, she wants her chime back because that is her memory of her home, and, you know, and the damage that was done. And so I repaired it and I sent it back with a letter saying, oh, my grandmother grew up not far from where you are and all this stuff. So actually I saved her letter. It's in my address book. 
because she then wrote back and she said, if you're ever in Licking, Missouri, please come see me. And so it's in my address book. So when I get back to Missouri to see my relatives, I'm going to show up and say, guess what? (laughs) Guess what? I'm here. And I'll probably be welcomed in. I love that. That's so you got a pen pal out of a repair. That's beautiful. And what about you, Luke? So I have a wind chime that actually Jamie and Patty gave me as a wedding gift three years before I came to work for them here. And it is the 50 inch Corinthian bells wind chime in green. And it was given to me in in, uh, October 2004. And It is engraved with our wedding date and my name and my wife's name. But at the time, engraving wasn't something that we typically did. I know this is a special chime because the company didn't engrave wind chimes at that time. And so, you know, Jamie and the founder spent a lot of time figuring out how to engrave this chime for this gift. And it hangs outside our window facing the backyard and every morning when I'm getting breakfast and getting ready for my day, I see that chime and and that gets my day started. Actually, that wind chime, I started working with the company in September of 2004 as the HR director. And so in just conversation with the former owner, I asked him, so can you engrave wind chimes? Because I have a friend that's getting married and, you know, I'm going to need a gift. He said, yeah, we can engrave wind chimes. But he said, I could do that for you sometime. And then he realized he was actually going to have to do it. And yeah, he spent several days in the back and yeah, Jamie helped him, but it was not a standard procedure at the time. So I'm really glad that we actually now when we say, yeah, we can engrave wind chimes, we actually really can. So that was a long time coming, but Luke certainly does have the prototype on that. That's amazing. I love the wedding story. I think moving forward, I'll definitely be getting my friends wind chimes with their wedding date engraved. Luke, I know that you shared your wedding story, but do you have any other stories you'd want to share? About a year ago, we got an email from a lady named Tia in Middleburg, Florida, and she had recently been diagnosed with stage four cancer and had bought uh, chimes for all of her children and her husband because she was starting to enter the stage where she knew time was short and she wanted to leave, leave them something to remember her by. And so she had a message engraved on each of these chimes that she gave as gifts that uh, said, Mama says BBB, just the three letters. And it turns out that her husband was in the Navy. And over the years, when he would go out on shore leave, she would say, be back, baby. And as they started to raise their children and they would go off to, you know, all of their different events, you know, through life, she would say, you know, be good, be kind, be Kate, be patient, be back soon. And so BBB became that family's mantra for, you know, parting words as long as well as the the love that they shared and all the lessons that she had passed on to her children over the years. And so she chose our chimes to leave that message behind for the years to come. That could be a children's book easily. (laughs) I love that. I love that so much. Hot take plant friends. There is no one right starter plant. There, I said it. And you know what? While I'm at it, there are also no real plant killers in the world. There are just people who have not figured out their right plants for their lifestyle. This is why I created the free Plant Parent Personality Test, because Plant Friend, I want you to get thriving alongside your houseplants as quickly as possible, so I made this cutie little Plant Parent Personality Quiz that's totally free for you on my website to take the guesswork out of building your plant collection effortlessly and joyfully. After speaking to thousands of members in our community, I realized that there are about five key plant parent personalities, each one with their unique set of strengths, weaknesses, and a unique set of plants that thrive under their care. For example, a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants daily, use them in their morning routines. If someone gifted that plant parent a succulent and they watered it every day, that succulent would die immediately. However... That drought-resistant succulent is a perfect match for a low-key plant parent, which is someone who travels, has kids, is busy, doesn't have time to engage with their plants every day. They're looking to engage with their plants more like once a week or once every couple of weeks. In addition, obviously, to understanding your light and basic plant care that we provide on this podcast, Happy Plant Parenthood is all about discovering your personality and then picking the right house plants to go with it. It's that simple. No more stressing over your collection. 
So what plant parent personality type are you, plant friend? All you got to do to find out is take my free quiz on my website and let me know. You can access it at growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality. After taking the test, you'll get an email with a list of plants, podcast episodes, and planty projects that I think would light you specifically up like a full spectrum grow light. So once again, that's growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality for your free plant parent personality test results. I'm Dr. Laurie Santos, host of the Happiness Lab podcast. Making new friends and maintaining old friendships is a great way to boost your happiness. There are lots of sources of well-being standing around you. You just have to tap into them. But sadly, we don't always feel up for being sociable. If I was approaching a stranger, my heart would race. I'd feel like I was going to throw up. I just had so much anxiety around it. So in a new season of the show, I'll tackle how to make firm friendships firmer, right through to the joy you can find in talking to total strangers. I'm very much enjoying your animal print scarf, madam. You look wonderful. The steps to becoming more social might surprise you. But trust me, there are things you can introduce into your daily routine right away. I adore your purple hair, madam. It pops. So listen to The Happiness Lab on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your shows. Make new plant friends, propagate knowledge, and grow some freaking joy. That's the motto of the Growing Joy Garden Society app and platform, otherwise known as the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet. If you've been an OG listener or a longtime listener, you might also know this app and platform as the Bloom and Grow Garden Party, but with the rebrand, we've rebranded it to the Growing Joy Garden Society. No trolls allowed, kind plant friends only. And if you haven't heard about the society yet, Plant Friend, you got to join. It's my online community that you can access via iOS or Android app or on your computer that I built to connect our international community of plant friends so we can all nerd out together about plants and celebrate our passion for our beloved plant babies. We have members literally all over the world. I'm so in love with this community of sweet plant friends. I can't say enough amazing things about them. But also there's a lot of really cool features about the app you might be interested in. There's dedicated hashtags to all sorts of different subsects of planty passions like houseplants, gardening, plant-inspired DIY projects, growing joy, plants and pets, and so many more. There's a plantrepreneur group, so if you're a planty entrepreneur and you want to connect with other planty entrepreneurs, you can join that group to connect and network. There's a plant swap section, plus the entire app, and this is my favorite part, is entirely searchable. So say you want to learn more about Hoya, you type the word Hoya into the search bar, and literally every post ever created about Hoya will Will pop up so you can click in, see what other people have been posting about Hoya and learn on your own and crowdsource hair information. It's so cool. But last but not least, it's an amazing way to support the show. Your monthly membership not only goes to sustaining the platform, but it also supports my team of editors, writers, and a community manager that help the world of Bloom and Grow keep growing. So come join us. All you got to do is go to jointhegardensociety.com and sign up for the community plan. Once again, you go to jointhegardensociety.com and click Click the community plan. You talk a lot about pouring into the community, the impact that your chimes make on the lives of the people that you're serving in addition to just a purchase, right? I know that philanthropy is also very important to Wind River. I've never had a sponsor before that donates 20% of anything on a routine basis. And you are constantly pouring into your community in so many different ways. Can you guys speak to why that's important and for entrepreneurs that might be listening, why having a real commitment to generosity is a helpful part of growing a business? Generosity is just is simply a choice. Some other business owners come to us and say, how can you do that? It's just if you decide that from the beginning then it's not difficult. It's not a should we give to this cause or how much should we give? It simply is we're going to give. Is this something that we want to support? It's not a if, it's a when or a how. And so just starting from the beginning with the complete attitude of we are going to share our profits, period. Jamie and I never got used to having all the profits anyway because that was never what we were ever going to do. And so to share what we have, it's just part of our DNA. 
when we described the business, Patty came up with a great way of doing that. And that is that we don't think of Wind River as a personal asset just for Patty and Jamie Baisden and our family. We think of Wind River as an asset to the local and global communities in that if we can help make the world a better place and we can help positively impact people's lives, it doesn't matter if it's food security, if it's mental health, if it's helping people in less developed countries have clean drinking water, you name it. If through our efforts, and I say our efforts, you know, I mentioned the leadership team, I mentioned the, the Winderer family, and it matters. We had an experience, a company-wide experience where very shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine, we made a decision to send a six-figure check to the Ukrainian relief fund. And we announced this to our employees. And it was interesting when, when we made that announcement, the joy of our employees, some of them were crying, all of them came up and thanked us because they were part of doing that. They were part of trying to make someone's life better, give them security, give them hope. If we can be part of giving people hope and sharing love with them, whether it's our neighbor here or our neighbor across the world, what better goal can any human being have? Yeah, that's beautiful. I want to ask you guys one final question. I know that the word harmony means a lot of different things to Wind River. What does harmony mean to you? Luke, do you want to start? Sure. I think harmony for me has a couple connotations. One, you don't have harmony in isolation. You have two or more notes making harmony together or two and more people working together. And so I think that that feeling of being connected to something, not just yourself and working together in a way that benefits both and makes something beautiful as a group is it's what our chimes do, but it's also the perfect metaphor for what we want to do when we interact with people, whether they're customers or vendors or suppliers or, or coworkers. And so that, that sense of taking two or more parts and building something beautiful in cooperation. Beautiful. What about you, Patty? I think Luke said that pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harmony is obviously on the, the very top level. It's we create Harmony because our chimes sound good. They are harmonious. But that's only the surface level of Harmony. Harmony goes deep and it resonates in a, in a community and in a people. There's also dissonance sometimes, and then there's resolution and being willing to have the tough conversations, whether that's with employers or suppliers or customers, in customers, whoever, you know, in the community, you need to have that tough conversation. But coming through it and the whole process and realizing that you can get to a win-win relationship. Wow. So how to follow up those two? I know, two very good answers. For me, I think everything that we do is, is based on relationship. And the harmony that we create for the individual end user, quite frankly, without that, all the other things don't happen. So if we're creating harmony for the person like yourself who, who has two chimes and the way it makes you feel, that's what's going to give us the resources, actually, right? To continue to have the relationships with our employees, with our customers, with our suppliers, with those nonprofits that we work with. And it's all based on, on harmonious relationships. And I think that harmony to me is getting along with everyone you come in contact with. And there are times where you need to be the one to step out and create the harmony. And Inspire Harmony reaches so many different levels. And, and I'm so happy that, that we have that as our as kind of our company mantra and tagline, because it, it distills all of the things that I would like the company to stand for. It's interesting. You said sometimes you have to start the harmony and sometimes you receive it. It's like sometimes you have to be the striker and sometimes you have to be the pipe. Yep. Yeah. I like that new yeah, country song. This metaphor right. To the next. right. It's a lot better than being the bug in the windshield. hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, this has been such a delight as our audience knows, you know, you guys have been a beloved partner with us this year. And as a growing joy listener, you get a free engraving. So what better gift as we approach the holiday season? But there's a chime for all seasons. And you guys have heard me wax poetic enough about it. But 
It's been so fun to learn more about the company and also just how these dang chimes sound so pretty. So thank you guys so much for being with me today. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. you Wind River. It was so nice getting to know Jamie and Patty and Luke. Jamie and Patty really don't do interviews about their company. So we get to be honored to have spoken to them. They've been lovely partners this year. Like I said, you know, their partnership helps me bring episodes to you on a weekly basis for free. So thank you Wind River for your partnership. I'm just so inspired. I'm so inspired by their mission. I'm so inspired by their deep knowledge in how they're really not delivering wind chimes, but they're delivering emotional experiences to people because that's truly what my experience has been. (laughs) I feel cheesy talking about it, but it's real. So if you feel inspired after listening to this episode and learning more about chimes, you can use the code GROWINGJOY at checkout at windriverchimes.com to get a free engraving. So get one for yourself with an inspiring phrase that you want or for the next gift that you need to get, whether it's a wedding, whether it's bereavement, whether it's a birthday, whether it's an anniversary, anniversary, consider getting a chime. They have so many different colors, so many different sounds on their websites. We love you, Wind River. I'm going to go meditate with my chimes a little bit now. So I hope this episode was fun. It was a little like side road exploration of garden adjacent joy, but I thought it was super interesting. I'm such a nerd, especially when it comes to music and musical things. And I hope you get outside and spend some time in your garden this week, plant friends. Whether or not you've got a wind chime out there, get your hands dirty. Exercise those five senses with your plants as we wind down gardening in North America. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, I hope you keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you like what you heard, make sure that you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss an episode. We have incredible episodes lined up in 2023, and I don't want you to miss one topic. And while you're subscribing, would you mind clicking over to the review section and leaving us a review? Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so I thank you in advance for helping this podcast reach as many planty earbuds as possible across the globe. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got a ton of free options for you. First, there's the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's so fun. It takes literally three minutes to complete. You take the test, you get your Plant Parent Personality Profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you, inspired by your results. The link is in the show notes. Make sure to let me know what your personality is after you take the test. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, check out my website. We've got a bunch of free guides that you can download on topics like understanding natural light, which is actually a three-day worksheet, and nine ways to clean up your office if you need to bring a little bit of planty joy into your work life. And finally, I want to invite you to join the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet, my online garden society. It's both a web platform and an iOS and Android app. It allows our listeners to get together in an algorithm and troll-free online space to swap plant care tips, humble brag about plant wins, and get support when you have plant fails. We have monthly live planty show and tells on Zoom, which are so fun, and even have a living library of planty book recommendations sourced from our community. You can go to jointhegardensociety.com to grab your membership. And for anything else, plant friend, I am here for you. Feel free to drop me a line, whether you have an idea for an episode, an event, or maybe you're even a planty business interested in sponsoring the show. And of course, following me on Instagram and TikTok for daily planty silliness, musings, and tips is always recommended. You can find me across socials at Growing Joy with Maria. Thank you again so much for listening. It is truly my honor and life's delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant care is self-care on Growing Joy, the podcast. Make new plant friends, propagate knowledge, and grow some freaking joy. That's the motto of the Growing Joy Garden Society app and platform, otherwise known as the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet. If you've been an OG listener or a longtime listener, you might also know this app and platform as the Bloom and Grow Garden Party, but with the rebrand, we've rebranded it to the Growing Joy Garden Society. No trolls allowed, kind plant friends only. And if you haven't heard about the society yet, Plant Friend, you got to join. It's my online community that you can access via iOS or Android app 
or on your computer that I built to connect our international community of plant friends so we can all nerd out together about plants and celebrate our passion for our beloved plant babies. We have members literally all over the world. I'm so in love with this community of sweet plant friends. I can't say enough amazing things about them. But also there's a lot of really cool features about the app you might be interested in. There's dedicated hashtags to all sorts of different subsects of planty passions like houseplants, gardening, plant-inspired DIY projects, growing joy, plants and pets, and so many more. There's a plantrepreneur group. So if you're a planty entrepreneur and you want to connect with other planty entrepreneurs, you can join that group to connect and network. There's a plant swap section. Plus, the entire app, and this is my favorite part, is entirely searchable. So say you want to learn more about Hoya, you type the word Hoya into the search bar and literally every post ever created about Hoya will pop up so you can click in, see what other people have been posting about Hoya and learn on your own and crowdsource hair information. It's so cool. But last but not least, it's an amazing way to support the show. Your monthly membership not only goes to sustaining the platform, but it also supports my team of editors, writers, and a community manager that help the world of Bloom and Grow keep growing. So come join us. All you got to do is go to jointhegardensociety.com and sign up for the community plan. Once again, you go to jointhegardensociety.com and click the community plan. Hot take plant friends, there is no one right starter plant. There, I said it. And you know what? While I'm at it, there are also no real plant killers in the world. There are just people who have not figured out their right plants for their lifestyle. This is why I created the free Plant Parent Personality Test, because Plant Friend, I want you to get thriving alongside your houseplants as quickly as possible, so I made this cutie little Plant Parent Personality Quiz that's totally free for you on my website to take the guesswork out of building your plant collection effortlessly and joyfully. After speaking to thousands of members in our community, I realized that there are about five key Plant Parent Personalities, each one with their unique set of strengths, weaknesses, and a unique set of plants that thrive under their care. For example, a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants daily, use them in their morning routines. If someone gifted that plant parent a succulent and they watered it every day, that succulent would die immediately. However, that drought-resistant succulent is a perfect match for a low-key plant parent, which is someone who travels, has kids, is busy, doesn't have time to engage with their plants every day. They're looking to engage with their plants more like once a week or once every couple of weeks. In addition, obviously, to understanding your light and basic plant care that we provide on this podcast, Happy Plant Parenthood is all about discovering your personality and then picking the right house plants to go with it. It's that simple. No more stressing over your collection. So what plant parent personality type are you, plant friend? All you got to do to find out is take my free quiz on my website and let me know. You can access it at growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality. After taking the test, you'll get an email with a list of plants, podcast episodes, and planty projects that I think would light you specifically up like a full spectrum grow light. So once again, that's growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality for your free plant parent personality test results. (music) 